If there's one theme that I associate more than any other with Blonde, it's youth. I've recently found myself thinking a lot about the people who have listened to this record, the ones who cherish it as much as I do, and the ones whose lives upon which it's had the same world-changing impact. Because five years ago, Frank Ocean laid down a testament to the youth of the 21st century. In a world saturated by the internet, it captures the experience of those growing up within it, the challenges they face, and how they cope. This isn't going to be a video analysing its musical elements or its songwriting, I mean, I'd only have praise to, to, to shower on it, to be honest, and there are other people who've done a far better job than I could anyway. Instead, I just wanted to mark this record's fifth anniversary. Half a decade on from its release, I am caught wondering where everyone who found a part of themselves in it is today. What are those who have found it in the years since, and for those who have yet to have their first experience of Blonde? There aren't many records that elicit such a response as Blonde does. I've had more conversations about this one record than I have for any other album that I've ever listened to, and they range from everything from someone who was sharing in the love for the beat switch on nights while I was working on student radio, all the way to the very deepest of late night DMCs. Mentioning its name or any of its tracks is like a common language, an acknowledgement that someone else found what they needed to find within it. Sometimes one of its tracks will express something that you need to hear in that moment, and other times it's one of the many minuscule lines or fleeting ad-libs that will just pep your mood. The reward for repetitive listening with this thing is truly unquantifiable. When you have a record whose words are so stream of conscience, whose themes are so personal and relevant to its audience, ranging from Facebook to phones to Wii, family, friends, cars, relationships, jobs, you innately create an album that guarantees intimacy, and which takes on the form of a friend, lover, or even a companion. And just like those who we let into our lives and who shape it, Blonde is able to play a remarkably similar role. Much of what we hear is coming from Ocean's own experiences. The album is so contemporary in its nature. The way in which he writes allows us to place ourselves within his stories, and yet I think it goes even more fundamental than that in some cases. His style and his voice mimics the ways that we actually talk about our own lives in real life. Perhaps then why I find myself thinking about where everyone who has discovered Blonde is today is because of the album's innately human quality. I contemplate the things that this record addressed for its listeners when they first listened to it, and what it's held them through since. And that's why youth is the predominant theme that I associate with it, because it has accompanied me as I've gone through the most formative part of my life, and I'm confident in saying that I know it did the same for many others. Here's where I first listened to Blonde, my dorm room at uni in the autumn of 2016. Starting out on the next big part of my life, I couldn't have discovered it at a better time, and it helped shape the mentality that I wanted to develop. It helped me find friends, it got me through breakups, it helped me consider my sexuality, it kept me company on the nights that I needed to get my thoughts together. Not only did it lead me to discover so much of the R&B and hip hop that I love today, it was a massive influence on who I wanted to be as a person. And as a guidebook for transitioning from teenhood to adulthood, I really could not recommend a better record. Ocean is 10 years older than me, and that meant that he had been through everything that I was going through already. By writing in hindsight, yet also placing us directly within his own memories, he gives us an unimpeded ability to find the support that we need from his music. Sometimes it's nice to romanticise the highs and lows of your life through the music that you listen to, and lord knows that I do that, fuck me. And there is definitely an opportunity to do that with Blonde as well. When so much of its construction is so simple, right down to that effortless album cover, it's your own life and your own experiences that actually get reflected. Reflection is such a constant throughout its runtime, not only in Ocean reflecting upon himself, but also in how the album is a reflection of society. One of the most powerful things that any piece of media can do, in my view, is to describe something that we haven't been able to by ourselves. And from a contemporary perspective, Blonde describes the experience of youth in the 21st century. One dominated by uncertainty, technology, and a quest for something tangible. It's not that the world is against us, it's that with the ability to know everything all of the time, 
we clamour onto the things that actually have a genuine meaning to us. The way that Ocean percolates the record with deliberately non-musical elements, such as a recording of his mum on Be Yourself, or the audio from a video that his late brother Ryan made on the end of Futura Free, is a perfect reflection of this. And that's why, below the contemporary perspective, Blonde attaches itself to our own experiences. Youth has a dual nature, it's something that we as humans seek to retain for as long as possible. It is also an acknowledgement that we have yet to grow up and experience life in full. The experiences that shape our youth inherently impact the rest of our lives, and yet without having the actual experience of having gone through them, we get things wrong a lot of the time. Nothing will change that, and nor should it in my view, but it doesn't exactly make it very easy to go through, especially when you happen to have been the human race's guinea pig for finding out what happens when you put an entire society permanently online. So to have an album that appeals to those in the middle of that experience without its own agenda is a blessing. There's no counter-meaning or ulterior motive here, because what you invest of yourself into Blonde, it gives back. And what it teaches in return is quite humbling. At the end of the day, all you have is what you care about. When I first listened to it, I never got the impression that Blonde was the record that would give me hope for the future or be a cure of sorts, and five years on it remains very much the same in that regard. Instead, it tells you to hold on no matter what comes your way. A lot has happened in the lives of those who found this record and have since grown up with it, and I marvel at the idea that everyone's experiences have been in some way shaped by it. Youth ultimately comes to an end, and in the time since I first listened to it, I've gone from being an introverted teenager who didn't know how to express himself, to a confident, self-assured, and outgoing young man. I'm still learning about myself, obviously, and I'm still coming to terms with the multitude of ways that being in this world makes me feel, but I go about it with a confidence and a self-assurance about who I want to be. My hope is that everyone who has let this record into their life has been able to go through that transformation or gain that same self-assurance. What allows Blonde to still be such an incredible record today is that it doesn't come down harshly on your character. There's no criticism or deconstruction of anyone. Instead, it's accepting and open with what it has to offer. The anxiety that wanting to be accepted in this world creates is nullified here. Anyone can find a place within its music, no matter who they are, or what they're going through. It shapes to fill whatever gap in your life it needs to, offering unconditional reassurance and support. What you found in Blonde will no doubt differ from what I did, and yet it acts as a common language, a conduit along which we can piece together what it means to be a young person in the 21st century. I will never meet everyone for whom this record means as much to them as it does to me, and yet I know that we all share a common understanding. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really, really appreciate it. This is a video that I've been thinking about ever since I realised this was going to be the fifth anniversary of Blonde, as in like this year. And I'm sure you got the impression in that video that Blonde means a hell of a lot to me. Like, it is a really, really important record to me. Easily one of my favourite records of all time, it sits on my top 20 list, on my besteveralbums.com uh, 100 or not quite 100, but favourite albums of all time list. It is an absolutely extraordinary album. You know, it's, it's one of those records where it doesn't take that much or that much effort to get into because it is just so open and so welcoming. But the amount of reward you get from it is, is astonishing. And it really is one of those, like, comfort blanket records that I turn to when I just need to as I said in the video, I need to put my, put my thoughts together and just, you know, get my head around things. I also ranked it as my favourite album of the decade on my Sour House Albums of the Decade list, you know. Th if that doesn't sing its praises enough, then I don't know what does, to be honest. Also just want to show the t-shirt that I've had on uh, during the video. I wasn't really able to because the camera cropped it out, but... 
I mean, isn't it just fucking beautiful? Sorry, that was a bit uh, distorted. Let me say that again. Isn't it fucking beautiful? Also, I wear it to Pride whenever I can. Whenever Pride happens, that is, obviously. Um, because, you know, Frank is a queer icon, modern, living queer icon, especially for bisexuality. And please share your own experiences with Blonde in the comments. I'd love to hear, you know, what it means to you, where you found it. I think it's really important with these kind of records when they're so intricately related to our own personal experiences and a lot of the love we we have for them comes from those personal experiences that we talk about them and i have talked to so many people about, about what this record means to me so share the love in the comments you know we'll see what everyone else thinks about that thank you once again for watching uh take care wherever you are and i shall catch you in the next one